the never ending chores with two little ones laundry is always at the top i don't see me <laughs> okay the laundry room was in the cabana that serviced the pool that was our elevated name for the room behind the garage my helpful three-year-old stephanie wanted to accompany me i had to schlep the laundry basket across the backyard with a sleeping baby and a carrier i could use two more arms even if they were just tiny ones the backyard was almost entirely swimming pool with only a thin strip of grass adjacent a walkway to the cabana as we're walking across the backyard Stephanie asked if she could stay outside to play with our dog, Sally. I agreed. This decision was based on two things. One, I was just going to pop into the laundry room and right back out again. And the second, Stephanie detested the pool and went out of her way to make sure she avoided it. And this is why. As a new mother living in Texas and owning a pool, I signed up for swimming lessons with your baby classes. The, the idea is to blow in the baby's face, they hold their breath, you lower them in the water, and they start kicking and kicking and swimming because that's what little humans instinctively can do. Easy peasy. All the other babies were in the class were like little baby porpoises, happily going under the water, flapping their little arms. Mothers would pluck them out of the water and they would take in a big breath, giggling and thinking it was the best thing ever. Not Stephanie. I would blow in Stephanie's face, which only resulted in, I'd let her, I'd put her into the water and she would thrash around like a drowning person until I just couldn't stand it another second. Her big breath in was accompanied by a blood curdling scream out. And a look that said it all. Why are you doing this to me? It was heartbreaking. She cried and screamed through the entire lesson. Blowing in the face of a crying baby does not result in them holding their breath, FYI. At the third lesson, the instructor suggested I wait until she was a little older and that we shouldn't come back. What, the wailing and screaming is upsetting the little pod of porpoises? Fine with me, I didn't want us there either. Stephanie's disdain for pools and water had not changed in three years. She was fine to be left outside for a couple of minutes. The glass cabana door was a light source for the very large dark garage, now our offices, and the laundry room was within there without a window. I set the carrier down, baby's still sleeping, perfect. I opened the washer. Oh, I forgot to move that load to the dryer. And oh no, there's a load in the dryer waiting to be folded. <sighs> and it was lots of little socks and big socks, no less. I'm, I'm in full laundry mode now. I do the load shuffle. I get the machines started. I start matching socks. I'm struck by an overwhelming desire to walk across to my desk. I push that thought right out of my hat, my head. I have uh, socks to pair up. Now it's loud. Vivian, walk across to your desk. Vivian, go to your desk, go to your desk. Oh, I'm irritated now. What could be so important on my desk? Hmm, maybe I forgot something. As I walk out of the laundry room and past the window, Looking out onto the pool, I notice the water's rippling. Hmm, I didn't notice wind before. I don't see the trees blowing. 
my brain finally processed what my eyes were seeing. I burst outside and sure enough, there's my little water hater thrashing around in the pool with her little arms stretched out trying to get to the edge. With one motion, I grabbed her arm and she's standing next to me, dripping wet and mad as a hornet. The doggy pushed me in the pool, mommy. The doggy pushed me in the pool. Did you see me swimming? Oh, I bent down and picked her up and held so tight to her. Despite how cautious she was, I hadn't planned on an accident. Who does? I started sobbing. I cried tears of thankfulness for my guardian angel, telling me to walk to my desk so I would see the choppy water. I cried tears of fear and regret and my stupidity and my ignorance. And I cried tears of more gratefulness that I didn't have to live the rest of my life with what could have happened. Do you listen to your guardian angel, that little voice inside of you that guides you? On that day, Stephanie's and my guardian angels were over here. Hello. 31 years later, I am so grateful that they made me listen. Fellow Toastmasters and especially Vivian. Vivian, from the moment I saw your gestures, I knew that your speech was going to be something special. You brought this speech alive for us. For instance, when you used the sweeping gesture, indicating all of the babies, when you gingerly tiptoed around the pool, indicating your three-year-old's reluctance to go anywhere near it. You also had excellent vocal variety. For instance, when you said, the doggy pushed me in the pool, mommy. The doggy pushed me in the pool. Additionally, you did an excellent job of relating to your audience when you asked us the question, do you listen to your guardian angels? You also gave us enough time to ponder that question. Oftentimes when we ask a question in our speech, we just wanna move on to the next topic at hand, but you did an excellent job of giving us time to consider. My suggestions are very minor. And my first one is to pause even longer when you're using the contorted face gesture, specifically when you said, I would blow in Stephanie's face, which would result in really lean into that moment for even more humorous effect and you will have your audience in stitches. Additionally, when you said that 31 years later, you are so grateful that your guardian angels made you listen, I wasn't sure if you were quite done. I really liked your question of, do you listen to your guardian angels? And I think that this would be an even better way to end your speech because it would tie it back to your audience at the very end and give us time to see just how much your speech related to each and every one of us. In summary, you had excellent vocal variety, gestures, use of humor, and you did an excellent job of relating to your audience. In terms of my suggestions, I would suggest that you close with the question, do you listen to your guardian angels, as well as exaggerate your facial expressions even more and elongate them when necessary to really create even more humorous effect. Vivian, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing you speak and thank you for giving me the opportunity to evaluate you. Mr. Contest Chair. Vivian, Guardian Angels Do Speak. That's a great title for a great speech. Thank you for your story. What an eye-opening experience you had, and I'm very glad that you shared it with us. This was very informative, as well as very engaging. I think you have an excellent vocal variety, using your voice for characters, as well as skip points across. For example, when you were talking about the best thing ever, and you had that dramatic pause, not for Stephanie. 
you had a challenging start at the beginning. I think there's a little technical, but you glossed over that and moved on, which is what we can all hope to do in that situation. I did notice that when you were backed up, I didn't really see as much eye contact as I did when you were closer to the screen. When you were closer to the screen, you were looking right in our eyes. It was fantastic. But I don't know if maybe you had a camera in a different place than the screen. Um, it didn't seem like there was direct eye contact at some points during that time. You, you did a splendid job when you were using your use of space. You used what I've not seen a lot. I've seen a lot of people move side to side, but I really like the back and forward. I really think that helped your speech, that helped you get points across. It helped with your body language. And when you were in the back, when you were talking about flailing around and things like that, the use of your body and your arms really gave more power to the words that you spoke. When you were talking about how she was mad as a hornet, I think that was very relatable. And I think that's something that, at least for me, phrases like that give me a nice picture in my head of like, oh, geez, that child was mad. You had a very clean background. I really liked that you had, you know, nothing distracting back there. We were able to focus on you and your speech. The clothing that you wore, having the blue shirt, not, again, not distracting, we're able to focus on your speech. I think overall, you had a very solid beginning. You gave us some background. You told us what you were going to talk about. You had a very engaging and informative story. And then in your closing, you wrapped everything back to Guardian Angel and finished up and said thank you and ended. Overall, great job. Thank you, Vivian. I'm done. Hello, Toastmasters. Distinguished guests, and in particular, you, Vivian. What an awesome presentation you gave. I thought that you had us right from the beginning, as soon as you gave us your introduction. You engulfed us in your speech by touching our human emotions and then beginning to give your speech, you started in a little bit of a hesitant fashion. I would have liked to have had you speed up a little bit, your body gestures, your emphasis on words, your voice volume, all of that was very, very well done. I, I would suggest one of two little things. At the very beginning of your speech, I think it would have been fantastic if you would have asked us a question and even brought us in closer to your speech. One of the things that as a suggestion that I would give you is say something like, do you ever listen to your Toastmaster, excuse me, to your guardian angel? And I think that's one of the things that would have even brought us in closer to your speech. Maybe also found a, a little bit of a happy ground so that you could see the, the light on you perfectly. You did all of your body gestures, all of that very, very well. And I think one of the things that I enjoyed was hearing you differentiate your voice from a child's voice. I like that. One of the other things that I would challenge you on is don't start every one of your sentences with an and. It became kind of redundant, and this, and this, and this. Try to use a different word. I like the way that you decided to really, really then ask a bunch of questions at the tail end of your speech. In summation, I think I would like to listen to you a little bit more, present a couple of other, other speeches, and I would really, really enjoy listening to you and the pauses that you gave and then the quickness of your speech, the quickness of your words, then I would really think that that would just put all kinds of cream on top of your fantastic presentation. I look forward very eagerly to listen to your next speech, and I want to thank you.
very much, Vivian. Fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Vivian Cobb, what a magnificent speech. Guardian angels do speak. You talked about your water hating child, Stephanie, who you ended up rescuing from the pool. You enthusiastically weaved your fascinating tale. I love the way you juxtapose, juxtapose your vocal variety with proximity to the camera. For example, you came close to the camera to deliberately say that blowing in the face of babies does not stop them from breathing. And you also did the same thing when you announced you needed to go to your desk. You expressed both excitement and fear. You punctuated your story with effective gestures, skirting around the pool, going in different directions. I noticed at the beginning you had a technical issue and you were having difficulties seeing yourself in the camera and you slipped out, I don't see me. I would encourage you to double check your camera and your Zoom setup before you start. And if there are technical issues, just pause. By not talking about the technical issues, your audience will forgive you. In fact, they probably won't even notice. I thought that you were just having a pause at the time to emphasize your point. I would also recommend eye contact. So when using Zoom, you want to look straight into your camera, which will give the audience the perception that you're looking straight into their eyes. In summary, Vivian Cobb, wow, what a great story. We were holding on to our, our chairs. We were listening to every word. As you use magnificent adjectives, your gestures were effective in, in highlighting parts of your story. You used different distances from your camera to emphasize parts of your story. Again, for the future, if there are technical issues, just ignore them. Your audience probably won't even notice. Just move on. Business must go on. I can't wait, Vivian Cobb, until I hear your next speech. Well done. Mr. Contest Chair. Vivian, wow, what an amazing speech. I really enjoyed all of the aspects of this exemplary speech. You had so much to show and to offer and to give to your audience in terms of a powerful message and paying attention to that voice in your head, that guardian angel. Now, how exactly is it that you made your message so powerful? One of the things that I picked up on is that you certainly involved all of the senses that go into be, us being a human being. You had the visual component. You were giving us vivid word pictures. I was able to clearly see exactly how your laundry room was laid out. I was able to clearly see what was happening as you were walking over to your office and you saw that window. You were using gestures in order to help us see what you were seeing. You were using those word pictures to help us see what you were seeing. You also allowed us to listen to what was going on. The splashing of the water. You involved all of our senses. You gave us what was being heard. You gave us really all of those aspects. One that I also really enjoyed is that when you had a special message to give, you would zoom into the camera, give that message and zoom back out. That really told the audience that you had something special to deliver in that moment. The touch aspect, you had comments such as your child being dripping wet, or as you were folding the socks, I could feel the socks in your hands as an audience member. One particular 
aspect of a sense that you may have missed though is smell. Maybe give the smell of the chlorine pool. Mm, maybe that wasn't a pleasant smell to give, but the smell of the springtime air that you could certainly smell the flowers and everything that was in bloom and how the birds were chirping and you could incorporate that smell sense into it. Your technique that you provided for this particular speech was also very impressive. You use methods that allowed the audience to follow along with you, especially with counting. Initially, you mentioned that you had two things that were important. You listed off our first item that it was important that as Stephanie was playing outside, you knew that she was going to be safe. And furthermore, she absolutely does not like the water. That was the second item. And you were able to point out those two things. So that technique that you were using was really impactful to our audience as we were following along with your speech. One item though for your technique that I think could use improvement is the very tail end for the conclusion. I noticed that you bowed down your head and whispered the words, thank you. Now, that may have also been for impact because you were thanking the guardian angel. However, there may have been another transition method. You could have referred to the Toastmaster or you could have simply closed the speech and be concluded with your topic. Mr. Toastmaster. Vivian, thank you so much for that message. I think it's so often that we forget that we have guardian angels surrounding us each day. There are those gut feelings, those gut reactions that we have. Maybe they're the different route that we take to work and we miss a, a wreck or something like that. Your story was so incredible because you had an experience that only, only a few of us can actually identify with. And I actually am one of those people. I mean, you are masterful at connecting. And let's just say this, you have this way of going into the camera and out of the camera and using your full, the full extent of the video screen. I don't know that I know more than one or two people who are as good and as masterful as you are. It helps make a connection with your audience because number one, you're moving, you're keeping us engaged. But the other thing about it is that you have incredible eye contact. We are in there. I felt like you were talking to me the whole time. Thank you very much. Your facial gestures are incredible because they tell a story. They give us the animation, the fear, the excitement, all of that. I think that you have done so much practice and you are just an amazing, amazing speaker when it comes to that facial gesture, it tells a story. And again, it brings us laughter and excitement and keeps us engaged. You have, a, you use great words to describe the situations. You were specific about the cabana and the, and the glass and what you were seeing, seeing. And then when you got to the place where your, your daughter had fallen in the, in the pool, it wasn't she had fell in the pool. You see it, saw the waves lapping up and that there was something wrong there. Oh, it's giving me chills right now, Vivian, because, oh, I understand how that feels. And because I understand how that feels, I wanna offer you just a piece of my advice I think that one of the things that's gonna be important when, when you tell the story again, because I am sure you're gonna tell the story again, because people we need to know about this message of listening to your guardian angel, is that I, I would love for you to slow down and pause and get a little more deliberate about the emotion. Let us feel, pull us in, where you sad, where you fearful were you what it, you know what all were you feeling about this this moment in time take that moment and let us totally feel it so in in summary i think that your communication is a number one keep on doing it when you do it again 
go ahead and let us feel the emotion and please give this speech again because we all need to be reminded how important that guardian angel is. Thank you. Guardian angels do speak. That set me up that this would be a speech of importance because guardian angels come when you need them. So that title captivated me. This was a speech of emotion from an unpleasant experience with your little one in learning how to swim to the guardian angel letting you know where your child was. There was a lot of emotion. And you handled it so well in creating the context for us to go on this emotional journey. The way you set up what it was like when you took your little one to swim lessons and the emotions that were accompanying that. The way you set up what your walk to the laundry room was like and what your assumptions were. You let us into your frame of mind and why you did the things that you did and took the actions that you took. I was in your frame of mind and I was in your laundry room. I could perfectly imagine where you were in that space and why you needed to get to your desk. You used your camera so well to bring us into your space. And it was a little disconcerting for you in the beginning when you couldn't see you. And it felt like you were a little off kilter during that time. It kind of worked though, because it felt like you were off kilter in the experience of the swim lessons. And then when you get to the laundry room and you are off kilter because there's laundry in the washer and laundry in the dryer, and boy, have I been there, and I get lost in pairing the socks. My suggestion is when you're off kilter like that, you can bring it into the speech to say, oh, I need to take a breath after that swim lesson. To work that into your speech and give you that breath so that you can catch yourself and recalibrate. It worked though, because at some point you found your stride and it felt like we then felt the stride and why the laundry was happening and occupying your mind and busyness. And I loved how you let us know that at first you heard a little voice from the guardian angel and then you heard the shout. And some people don't hear the shout, but you did. You let us know, and again, we had more emotion. It was a beautiful speech of relaying all the drama of life that happens in various stages. And it was a beautiful speech knowing that all went ended well. Thank you so much for bringing us on that emotional journey and giving us that insight. Thank you. It was the best thing ever. Or was it, Vivian? Toastmasters, friends, and guests. Wow, Vivian, every time you are in the room, you bring word pictures. Pictures that describe blood curdling screams of your daughter, Stephanie. And so many other things like lovely, vivid descriptions that really tie us to relating to your story, your informative, personal story that brought up so many stories of my past. I can relate to it as a mom of two, two teenagers that is, but I remember like it was yesterday thinking about their swimsuits and having them to go through all of those classes, how cold it was in the pool. You brought so many different things to mind. For instance, the kicking, 
the screaming, the swimming or not. And then you brought other word pictures. Like we could visualize your daughter kicking and screaming and then saying that, that her dog pushed her in. Some things that I believe you did really well, those word pictures and emotions. You brought emotions such as fear and crying, marrying them with facial expressions that really matched what you were feeling during that time period. Some areas to consider. What if you brought props? Perhaps a laundry basket and you brought it towards us and you showed those mass matching socks that you were really trying to make use of your time. Because we know as moms, there's not so much time when you have little kids. You're trying to shove that, that time frame and really make use of it. Another area is what if you brought that childhood voice of Stephanie's? What if you brought that forward and used more of your senses, smelling the chlorine? And what did it taste like? Was there something in the air that just was kind of icky and scary that married with your senses? And what about that other thing? Like, what was Stephanie wearing? And was she strutting around in that swimsuit? Because there's something else that we, sh we should consider to really marry with those word pictures. I believe if you continue bringing your word pictures, bring forth those emotions, as well as bringing props, a laundry basket, and also bringing your senses, I think you'd be on your way to the best thing ever. Are you ready to hear who placed in different places here? Are you ready? I'm gonna start off with the third place winner. It's Alyssa Tiller. Alyssa, congratulations. Our second place winner tonight is Kathy Yates. Kathy, congratulations, great job. And our first place winner, drum roll, super exciting, Marnie Myers. Congratulations, Marnie. Thank you, wonderful. <laughs> this concludes the District 26 Evaluation Speech Contest. Our team has worked so hard for the contest, the conference. It just shows how great District 26 is and how much we really love our Toastmasters. Thank you all for being here today.